What's up? Good morning. Well, actually, it's good afternoon. But anyway, today's video is about a very exhilarating topic, and that is maths. Now, before you click away and say, whoa, 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 I have no interest in maths whatsoever, let me explain to you. Before university, I actually also didn't enjoy that maths that much. My uh, strong suit at school was much more languages and history and writing essays and the cultural stuff and the arts and that. My maths was okay, it wasn't great, but high school maths is easy compared to university maths. Um, and so I put in the work in that and I got like most 70s throughout most of high school and I managed to scrape an 80 and uh, end of a trick in that. So I was okay, but maths wasn't my first love, I didn't enjoy it that much. And through a series of ignorant um, <laughs> decisions and probably really good decisions that I'm grateful for, I ended up choosing a very maths-based degree, computer engineering, for university. And having just finished third year university now, I have finished all the maths modules that I'm supposed to do at varsity. So that's all the pure maths modules. We use maths in every single module in engineering, but the pure theoretical maths modules are finally finished. Now, you're supposed to finish all the theoretical maths modules at the end of second year, but I, alongside a lot of other engineering students, had to repeat a few maths modules because I just failed them outright the first time, and not so much that the math itself was so difficult, but I was trying to take it in the same semester as a number of other difficult courses, such as COS212, data structures and algorithms, which I put more time and effort into and didn't put enough time and effort into math since I ended up failing two math modules. It's a whole palaver story. But um, quick update on my degree plan before we get into the maths. This is what my uh, degree plan is looking like right now. This is my own plan that I've made. So this semester, having finished 238 maths, computer engineering design, engineering history slash management, and control systems and maths. Um, I only have two, four, six, eight, ten modules left at university, and then I'm finished my degree. How amazing is that? So they're split up over the next two years, fourth year and fifth year. That's all that I have left for my degree, and it's getting super exciting looking at this. But onto the video now. Um, I want to talk about my experience with university maths, things I've learned, things I would recommend if you're going to study a math degree at varsity, motivation to study a math degree at varsity, and all of the great things that doing so much maths at university has taught me. So let's get straight into it. Let's move over to my computer. Also, just a side note in case you were wondering, I did not do AP Maths at school. It probably would have helped. My friends that did AP Maths at school said it helped in the first semester of varsity, but after that it kind of caught up to all of the content they did in AP Maths. So keep that in mind for when we move over to my desk. And so I wanted to start off by just listing all of the different maths courses that we do in engineering at Tux and all of the engineering degrees actually do the same maths courses uh, throughout the first two years. And so in first year you do W2W, that's Viskunde and Tuchopasta Viskunde or Maths and Applied Maths. So in first year you do W2W 158 in first semester and 164 in second semester, that's basically Calculus 1 and 2. In second year you do in first semester W2W 256 and 258. That's Calculus 3 and Differential Equations. And then in the second semester of second year, you do W2W 263 and 238. That's Numerical Methods and basically more calculus. It's like the end of calculus. I'm looking here at the main textbook that we used for the majority of the courses, and that is James Stewart's Calculus 8th Edition, Early Transcendentals, yada, yada, yada. And so basically, the maths modules at Varsity focus on calculus. There's a little bit of stats and a little bit of other stuff, but it's mostly calculus. That includes function and models, limits and derivatives. Um, so a lot of time is spent in first year on differentiation and applications of differentiation. Then moving on to integration and the applications of integration. Integration is really the workhorse of calculus. And so we did a lot of that, you know, doing integration by parts. That one tricked me up for a while. Um, you know, strategies for integration, using tables, using partial fractions, all interesting stuff. Um, and then some applications of it, modeling, uh, modeling and stuff. And then in second year, we did a lot of the parametric equations and polar coordinates, vectors, uh, three-dimensional coordinate systems, vector functions, uh, partial derivatives, multiple integrals, lots of 3D shapes, vector calculus. That stuff was in 258, and that's the stuff that caused me to fail uh, in second year, so I had to redo it this year. Um, the Green's theorem, colon divergence, parametric surfaces in the areas. I can put up some stuff on the screen here, some like snippets of notes, some screenshots of papers and that that we did. Basically that was a lot of 3D shapes, that was a lot of 3D analysis that my mind did not like. Um, but I eventually got around to mastering with a lot of time and effort and doing all of the tucks, but more on that later. Um, the one course that we did that was um, 263 was numerical methods, and so that was an interesting course because that was centered around um, like all this integration and calculus and that, but doing it by hand and doing it with approximate approximation methods. Um, and so basically the intuition behind these advanced formulas and that, but doing it by hand and doing it with 
basic formulas and to, to really uh, get an understanding of how the formulas actually work. So that was useful. We also did a differential equations course, well, introduction to differential equations at least, WTW256, and that used this alternate textbook, um, the Zill textbook on differential equations with boundary value problems. We didn't use the textbook as much, I think, as we used their pre-built notes and that, but really good about differential equations, modeling with them, higher order differential equations, all the different things that you can do with differential equations. Of course, Laplace is like the workhorse of differential equations, and the Laplace transform and how you can use that to get differential equations and then to transform them into their normal form and, that, and how to work with them and how to use them in electronics and uh, chemical systems and that numerical solutions, autonomous systems. Fourier series did a lot on that. Um, yeah, I won't get too deep into this because it was only a one module course, but it's also the other one that I failed because I was doing it in that first semester of second year. Uh, and then returning back to the end of second year when you just do one math course, 238, that's the course that most people fail. Um, and it's particularly difficult because it's just a lot of work in one module and it's really the difficult stuff uh, such as sequences and series, convergence tests, power series, um, Fourier series applications to partial differential equations, heat and wave equations, uh, linear algebra with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, with first and second order systems of differential equations. It doesn't sound that hard, but it was particularly difficult, but I managed to pass that, whether it's because it was online and I just got to put more time and effort into it, who knows, but I'm grateful. Um, and so that was a very bad, very quick rundown of all the maths that we do at university, all the pure theoretical courses. You use all of these things, integration, differential equations, and all the other engineering modules to solve and create and find formulas for problems and to model solutions to potential problems, uh, in particular in uh, computer engineering with electronics and that we use the Fourier series and the Fourier transform and that a lot in signals and signals based applications to convert stuff from the time to the frequency domain and so that that section of calculus is like indispensable you can't not know it if you're going to go and work in signals one day. Now what I learned as my experience with university maths went on is that attending classes and um, just understanding the theory is a tiny part of what you actually need to do to be successful and to pass these maths courses. The biggest piece of advice I can give is to just do every single tutorial problem that they give you. Uh, there's a tutorial every week for every maths course that you do at Varsity and at Tux um, where you get a number of problems to do, it's in the study guide. Um, This year is the 238 study guide. So every week they assign a number of problems and that to do. And it can be a lot. It can be up to like, you know, 20, 30, 40 problems at a time, uh, which are all intricate and require many hours of solving and that. But at the beginning of my university degree, I kind of skimmed through the tuts. I didn't do them properly. And as a result, I eventually failed some maths courses. And then this year, I really put effort into it and I did every single tutorial problem that they assigned. This is the 238 study guide. And I don't know if you can see, but here I have ticked off every single question in the study guide that they told us to do. If I got stuck, I would Google it online, I would ask friends for help and that. And in so doing, every single problem here, when we got round to our weekly tests and semester tests and exams, the content was actually not easy, but very manageable and very understandable. Um, and so at the beginning of varsity, I was making these long summaries for my math courses. I was take, looking at the notes and making my own summaries and trying to make it, not make it look pretty, but like make it uh, very simplified and have a really good understanding of the theory and that. And I spent time doing that instead of actually just sitting down, putting my head down and actually working on problems, which is the way to solve uh, maths based problems and how to solve engineering problems. And maybe other people got this a lot before me and it took me a while to understand this. Maybe that's why people have been doing so much better than me for so many years uh, at engineering. But just doing the problems and that, ignoring the lectures, ignoring the theory and that, uh, not to the point where you don't attend the lectures and you don't look at the theory, but not focusing on them and not prioritizing them, and rather prioritizing just doing tutorial problems and just solving as many problems as possible. That's the way to succeed uh, in maths-based courses at university. And I can't believe it took me so long to figure it out, but I figured it out, didn't I? And so now, um, nearing the second half of my university degree and having finished some of these theoretical maths courses, I can thoroughly recommend doing a maths-based university degree. Um, doing the theory and the maths that I have now at university has given me a really deep appreciation of some of the finer sciences, some of the hard sciences in the world. Specifically, even understanding things like AI and space exploration has become 
a lot easier ever since I've done these university maths degrees because to an extent it's shaped my mind and uh, changed my interests in the more direction in the direction of more hard science based uh, environments and interests but just being able to understand uh, linear regression and how AI works and the calculus of gradient descent and that which is a, a very important part of artificial intelligence um, understanding those difficult parts of computer science and technology even if I haven't mastered them completely but understanding the context of where these math problems come from and how they are solved has given me a much better appreciation of um, AI and technology and computers and signals and electronics and the internet and I'm really happy about that. I think it's made me into a better engineer and a better um, young person of science. In particular, I now have skills and knowledge in the mathematics domain that I never dreamed I would have. Uh, there was a point in grade nine actually when I almost didn't take science. Like uh, everyone was telling me to do science and I was like, no, don't tell me what to do. I want to make my own choices and everything. And I nearly didn't end up taking science and I wouldn't have been able to do engineering and all of the things that I know now wouldn't be. And that's very scary to me. Um, but I have now reached a point where I understand so much more about maths and science than I ever thought I would. And, like, it wasn't actually that difficult. Okay, it was very difficult and I had to put a lot of time and effort into it, but it wasn't the impossible task that I used to think it was. Uh, especially in modern society with the very uh, quick rewards-based system we have with dopamine and in Instagram and social media and all of the things that are very easy to do. Sitting down and learning something difficult like maths and science and physics can can be very daunting and very unpleasant at times. But I'm really glad that I've done it now and that, you know, my university degree and that has forced me to do it and has shaped me in that direction because I think it's really valuable. And I have skills in that now that I never dreamed I would have and I know about things that I never thought I would ever understand. And that's really empowering and really cool and is has already made my university degree very worth it. I think I think about uh, job options and my career path and what I want to do with my life in a much different way now that I've done some of the maths and science-based courses at university than I did before. And that's what Varsity is about. It's about shaping your mind and it's about making your future a better one, a more informed one, a more scientific one, and a more mathematical one. And it's a better, better life that I've got in store for me now that I've done all this maths. But anyway, thank you for nerding out with me today about maths. Um, I did a very shit job of explaining some of the courses and the stuff that we've done at university, but that's because I've forgotten some of it. But the skills and the attitude and the approach has remained in my mind, and that's what's important. Um, like that's, that's further to say, I haven't mastered all of these university maths courses. I'm not the greatest at it. I don't understand everything. I certainly haven't mastered every part of the syllabus that we're supposed to. But I've understood enough and mastered enough to have a really good appreciation of it and to use that to my and my, the people around me's benefit. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to make a video very soon about what to choose as a university degree in South Africa because I think I've got some knowledge about that that will be useful. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you in the next vlog. It'll probably be a very much not scientific, not mathematical one. And so yeah, I'll see you soon.